What we're going to do today is we're going to do labs three and four of project one. So what this entails is we're going to set up the paddles and we're going to get the ball moving. So I'm going to open up Multimedia Fusion 2. And now what I'm going to do I'm going to open up my game, click my open button, and I'm going to, if I'm not in project one here, I will navigate there. I'll just click this down for a look in. I'll go in libraries, I'll go in documents, I'll go in the game design folder I, I made. It's um, project one is in the resources folder. And you have a pro you put your hopefully you saved your ping game inside your project one folder. If you did, it should show up right here. So I double click it to open it. And what I do is I double click game down here to open up the game. And then I maximize my application here. And I make sure that it's centered by dragging on my um, scroll bar over here on the right. So what we're doing in lab three is making two petals, I mean paddles. We're going to make one um, orange and one green just so that we can distinguish them. If you want to make color changes later that's great. Just know that um, we're just doing this to make it easy first then you can change it later. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my paddle. So I'm going to go insert new object I'm going, to take it, I'm going to use an active object and click OK. I'm just going to put it somewhere on my screen here. I'm going to double click this. And here we go. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make, do my size now. So I click the size. And now I'm going to change my sizes. I'm going to take away the 32 and put a 10 in the width. And the height I'm going to change to 60. So I'm going to click Apply. Now it's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to erase that color in there. So I take my eraser and I erase out that blue that I've got there. So it's all gone. So what I'm going to do is color in my line here. I've already got it erased. So now I click my paint bucket. Now I get the fill color I want. I want a light green here. Then I'm going to click and pour it in here. So I've got that. Then I'm going to click OK. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this so I've got another paddle. So what you're going to do is you're going to clone an object. You take the original one and you're going to make a copy. That's what cloning does. And so what it's going to do is going to you're going to give it a different color and it's going to move differently. But it's going to be a copy of the original. So now all I have to do is click the edit menu down, click clone, click OK. Now it looks like one long paddle, so I'm just going to separate them out so I can see them differently. All I have to do is double click it. I've got my um, this back up. So now all I have to do is change this to orange. So um, I erase my color. Take my bucket and put my orange color in there. Okay, so now I've got two different colored paddles. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my objects. You know, one, two, three, and four aren't going to make it. So what I do is I right click my object here and I click rename 
and I name this one ball. I click OK. I double click this one, or I right click this one. I click rename, and I name this one center line. Then I click one of my paddles. I right name it. I right click it. I click rename. I name this one paddle one. I click OK. Then I right click the other one. I click rename and I click this one, call this one paddle two. And I click OK. Next thing we do is you align objects. When alignment is important, you tell it exactly where it goes, otherwise, you just drag it about where you'd like it. The next thing I want to do is I want to center align my center line. <laughs> so I right click my center line and then I go to um, align in frame. I want it horizontal center so I click horizontal center. It means it's going to be right in the center. And then I'm going to align it vertically. So I go align in frame, vertical center. So that makes it line up with the top and bottom. Next thing I do is I align this paddle up. I want to put it a little bit to the side so I got some space over here on the left. So I take my right paddle here and I put it with some space towards the right side of the screen there. And if something's overlapping the ball, I pull the ball out so it's not being overlapped. So now if I've got a red, I mean an orange and green paddle, and I've named my ball, I've named paddle one and paddle two in center line, and I've aligned them up, then I'm finished with lab three. What we're going to do this time is we're going to make the ball move. Okay, you have active objects. And active objects can be either static or they can be in movement. So the movement tab on the properties toolbar is going to change the way an active object moves. So lots of different movements you can choose from and we're going to learn about some of them. So obviously the kind of movement we're going to use on our ball is the bouncing ball movement. So all that is, it's defined as when that ball hits something solid, it quickly springs away from it, just like a ball would bounce off the ground. Um, any object you want to use uh, in that manner, you can use a bouncing ball movement with. So now I'm going to add movement to the ball. I click the ball. Then I come over here to the movement button. I click the movement button. So I'm going to change the static movement to bouncing. I click bouncing ball there. So I pull this down and I make sure that moving at start is checked. Then I want to try the movement. I click that. So that shows me what that movement looks like to make sure that that's what I want. Now that I've set the uh, bounce for the ball, I want to make sure that it's going in the right direction. I want it to go towards the paddle. I don't want it to go up and down. So I'm going to affect the initial direction. I click over here in the initial direction. Then I click reset. Then I go find the zero box, which is right here. I want, I want it to be able to go there. And then I want it to go to uh, one, two, and three. Then I want it to go to 31, 30, 
and 29. Then on this side, I want to go here to 16, then um, 15, 14, and 13, and I want it to go down to 18 and 19. So those are the initial, oops, 18 and 19. There, those are the initial directions that I'm going to allow that to go to. I want the ball that can go in those directions to begin with. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the event editor to program certain things that are going to happen. For example, when the ball and the paddles collide. So what do we want to happen? So in the view menu, I hit event editor. Then I click new condition. Now I right click the ball object, then I click con uh, collisions. Then I click another object. So I see what happens when it hits the paddle one. Click OK. Now I'm going to do it again. So I click New Condition. I right click the ball. I do Collisions. Another object. And I click the other paddle. I click OK. So now I got two conditions between the ball and the two paddles. So when the ball hits a paddle, it's going to bounce. So I'm going to click, right click on the ball here. What's going to happen? The movement is bounce. Same thing with this one. I right click, movement, bounce. So the ball is going to bounce when it hits the paddle. Now that you've tested, you've done your um, collisions, let's test our game. So we're going to go run, application. And just keep on going File, New, until you get it hitting a paddle. And see how if it's bouncing off the paddle. So check your work. Do you have two collision conditions between the two paddles? Um, did your ball bounce when you when you clicked the uh, paddles on, in your test window? If so, you're ready for level five. So in lab four, what did you do? You added the movement and direction to the ball, and you created the events that made the ball bounce off the paddles when they collide.